So today I want to talk about slowing down and rest. And if you're like me, you probably have a lot of trouble to just disconnect and relax. Growing up, every time I was at the doctor's or whatever kind of appointment, they would tell me, you're too stressed, you need to relax. And those words, for some reason, made me feel even more stressed because I didn't necessarily feel stressed. But I think what they were trying to tell me is that my body was stressed. And it's crazy because so many of us live in that similar state. How many of you can easily relax on vacation, but not so much at home the day to day? Is it just me? <laughs> Probably just me. Like for the longest time, going on vacation was my designated time to decompress, turn it all off and relax. But that's not sustainable. We can't wait from one vacation to the next. How many vacations can we take? So obviously I realized there was something that I had to look deeper into and there's so many different layers that was causing me to be unable to relax because I was feeling so many sense of urgency in every angle. And I think the main reason is you don't go from, you know, at your job going from like a hundred miles an hour to completely stopping. It's not healthy. It's kind of like a shock to your system. You need to slowly unwind, let your body and mind that it's time to relax. But sometimes nowadays we have so much technology and just stimulus around us that is constantly getting our attention, traumatizing us. You know, the news can be very triggering if you're sensitive and it's just so much energy just coming at us in every direction. So let's take a look first at the underlying causes for why it's so hard to slow down. Perhaps it's the fears of slowing down. Does that mean you won't be able to be productive? So much of my worth was tied to productivity. So the fact that I was at home relaxing made me feel anxious because my brain associated with being worthy by being productive and accomplishing things. And those things can range from, you know, a career goal to cleaning the house, doing laundry, those little things. So my mom's also think, always thinking about the next step. And sometimes we also associate rest as being lazy, rest as unproductive rest as something that you need to work hard to earn. You don't earn rest. We have to rest. It is part of our genetic makeup. We need to sleep every night, but so many of us don't have restful sleep because we're so stressed all the time. And I can probably go around in circles, but do you see all the different layers that are causing us overwhelm and how why you know many of us have been working at home for the past year i've been a freelancer for a couple of years so it's something that i'm used to but i'm very aware of the mental health effects if you're not conscious of how you're balancing yourself because you can burn out by being at home all the time too and shouldn't you be resting at home <laughs> so there are so many messages in our subconscious that are telling us, basically bombarding us that you sh we shouldn't rest. In our mind, we know logically we have to, our body feels tired, we have a headache, but the subconscious is like, excuse me, your survival depends on you working. Your survival depends on you accomplishing. And very often, it's a subconscious voice. We don't even notice that it's driving our decisions and how we are. And basically they are disguised as fears of slowing down because we don't wanna lose momentum. We don't wanna miss out. FOMO is a big thing. 
You might also think that if we are not constantly working, then things will stop working as well. Things will break without us doing all the time. And these fears are in so much of the messaging that is being fed to us, so much of the conditioning. And a lot of work environments that we work at because of technology and because it's so accessible and easy to bring work with you wherever you go, it becomes more high pressure, fast paced environment. And seeing everybody's highlight with social media can also accentuate that you need to be doing more. So do you see all these other pieces of information that are feeding to us that rest is not safe in quotations here. So I want to talk about redefining rest and slowing down. Because until I got to that point, I wasn't able to fully relax. And it's still a practice. It's been a couple of years since I quit my career. And I'm a lot better than when I first started. You know, one of the my biggest takeaways was I burnt out when I was in my career. And I thought, now that I left that environment, it's done. I thought, you know, I cut, I got the room of the problem. No, I was carrying the same behaviors, the same beliefs from that environment to the new one. And we do that without knowing. We think that it's as simple as stopping and that's how you recover from burnout. But again, do you see all those layers that are being added upon? And, you know, they can be a little bit sneaky if we don't look into them. They're kind of just under the rug and you're tripping over and over again. So... When I was in advertising, the external stimulus was telling me that I need to work, but the external stimulus became my internal messaging. So I carried that sense of urgency and everything else that I did. And if you notice, that's how you're being every time. You might have the same sense of urgency in trying to do your tasks, you know, housework, taking care of your kids, we carry that energy with us throughout the day. So here are five steps to redefine your relationship with stress, to redefine slowing down and tune in with yourself. The first one is process your stress because stress as much as it's mental, it's also physical. It stays in our body. We're mind and body. We're not separate. We treat, a lot of times we treat body and mind as something separate. We treat as working out for our body to look good or feel better, but it actually influences how you think and how your mind works as well. So stress, process it. Make sure you kind of just, instead of holding on to that energy, you can flush it out. And physical exercise, any kind of physical activity can be really, really helpful to do it. So either it's yoga, either it's, you know, a nice boxing class, dancing, running, try to really incorporate because any kind of movement helps your muscles relax. It just helps things flow a little bit more. And every day might be different. Maybe yesterday you really wanted something that was grounded because you felt ungrounded and today you feel like you have this extra energy so maybe you know go for a dancing class or do something that you really enjoy i think that's so important to the intention behind movement not just working out for the sake of so that's the first one process that stress through your physical body and the second one is ground yourself grounding tools and I love grounding tools because they help me connect my mind body and spirit sometimes it's like oof, it kind of they all expand in different directions and my body is trying to catch up with what my mind is trying to do and my spirit is kind of like in la la land and I'm trying to like bring it back to my body so grounding tools maybe you know it was so interesting one of my friends was asking me what does grounding mean how do you feel grounded so let me ask you this question. What is grounding for you? What helps you feel centered, relaxed, connected to yourself? And it doesn't have to be anything 
extraordinary. Like, oh, I feel grounded when I go to a yoga retreat for a week. That's great. But what are some small practices that are sustainable and that you can incorporate in your everyday? One that I love to share with my clients is the power of the breath. Just coming into the breath. We can do it right now. Just gently close your eyes and bring your attention to your breath. Simply noticing your inhales and exhales flowing through. Each inhale lifting, opening you up. And in the exhale, softening, letting everything go. A couple more here. Big inhale through your nose. And long exhale out your mouth. If you want to place your hands on top of your chest, feel your heart beating for you. Whenever you're ready, gently open your eyes. And this is like a super quick one, but you know, that was maybe a few seconds. I don't even know if that was a minute. And I feel a lot more connected and grounded, came into my body to the present moment. And these little tools, the more you practice, the easier, the more effective they are because you get used to it. Your body, it's kind of like a trigger for your body to, oh, okay, I can come back to myself. So find yourself some grounding tools that you really enjoy. Is it talking to a friend, going outside, staring at the ocean, at the clouds? Give yourself that time to really just ground and check in. And the third one is redefine rest, slowing down. And I know it's a few, but what does rest mean for you? What is the idea of rest? When do you feel rested? What happens when you're rested? A few examples here, you can use them as journal prompts. Rest means taking naps for me. Rest means slowing down. Rest means recharging. It means letting my mind and body process whatever I've learned, whatever I want to do it just really gives me space to kind of think about it and when i'm rested i feel so much more inspired and open i feel like the energy just pours through me when i will get to that point sometimes there's a lot of resistance before i allow myself to rest but when i actually rest that those are the feelings that come up so think about how you feel when you're rested. Slowing down. Redefine it. What does slowing down mean to you right now? See what comes up. Is it true? And that's such a great opportunity, even journaling or talking out loud, however you process things best. It's a great way to see Oh, that's actually how I thought about this thing. Oh, you know, that I didn't know there was a fear that was underneath there. I didn't know that's how I saw things. So yeah, slowing down. Is there any fear underlying? There ha does it have to be? My fears when I was slowing down was the idea that I would get behind, that I wouldn't become the person I envision myself to become, that I'll miss out. Those were some fears that were stopping me from slowing down. And to redefine it, is it true? Ask yourself that. It is true that if I slow down, then I'll miss out. And if I tune into my breath, you know, if I ground to myself, I know it's not true. 
I know that whatever's meant to me, for me, will happen when it's meant to happen. And it's also when I'm taking care of myself. So with these grounding tools, that really allows me to access that part where, you know, my inner knowing to redefine the relationship that I have around rest, productivity, stress. <laughs> and if you also want to journal about productivity, what is your relationship with productivity? So quick recap, the first one is process. Physically, let out the stress, let your body release. The second one is grounding tools. What tools help you ground? We did a breathing exercise, and then right now we just talked about redefining rest, slowing down, and productivity. And the fourth one is setting clear boundaries. And that's such an important one that, you know, it's a lesson that I keep learning over and over again, which is fine because I didn't have a lot of boundaries before, which also led to my burnout. I was a people pleaser and perfectionist, and I wanted to be like a all-star, is that the expression? So I overextended myself. I said yes to everyone, and every time I said that, and it didn't feel good or exciting, I was saying no to myself. I'm so grateful that I've learned and I no longer put myself in that position. But sometimes, you know, even if I do put myself in that position again, I think I'll, I'll be able to look at it with more compassion and understanding instead of judgment. And right now, since a lot of us are working from home, it might be harder to set these kind of boundaries because we're expected to be perhaps accessible at all times and, you know, there's no clear transition between work and rest. Unless you do, if you have routines, that's great. But setting boundaries is also having routines to transition from one thing to the next. So for instance, I do not look at my phone in the morning until I journal, until I have kind of just like, okay, what is my body feeling? <laughs> I've tried it so many times where I'm like, well, I'll just take a sneak peek and it'll be fun. And then like an hour later, I'm on social media feeling like crap and like I've lost my time. And yeah, it it took me a very long, a very long time to get to the point where I'm like, oh, I can let go of my phone. I can leave it outside. Things will be okay. So that's a boundary that I set. If it's a boundary that involves more people, kind of maybe telling your boss, hey, I'm not responding to emails after six, I need to take care of my mental health. Hopefully they understand that's another boundary if you feel comfortable in testing out. Um, and then the transition boundary. So let's say you're done your work, you're closing your laptop. Is there some sort of routine or trigger that you can help signal your body and mind that, okay, you can unwind now? Because if you were one of those people who were commuting before working at home this might be that might have been the time and the moment that your mind and body was able to relax and now that you're working from home you don't have that time anymore so you might still be like carrying that energy from work and then holding on to it through everything else that you do yeah basically in the transitions giving your mind and body clear triggers that it's okay that you can relax now. And if you feel like there are some thoughts that are you know, still spiraling, reach for your grounding tools. Is it talking to someone, therapist, coach, working out, going for that salsa lesson, online class, whatever that is, go to your grounding tools to help you set better boundaries as well. And then the final one is one that we already talked about before, in number three, which was redefining rest and slowing down. But this one is actually highlighting the benefits of slowing down. And we briefly touched on it. What happens when you let yourself rest? It's usually the opposite of fear. You feel like if I rest right now, then I'm not productive. I won't get things done. Maybe you know, tying your worth to it. But so many times when you are 
actually rested. You feel, ooh, open, refreshed, inspired. I actually get to do more because I have more energy. So, you know, it's a long reconditioning, reprogramming, recalibrating of what rest means to you. And sometimes our brain might get it, but it takes a bit of practice for our body to follow along so that you can just really enjoy it and the anxious energy doesn't build up because the anxiety comes from those anxious thoughts and those fears that are like, excuse me, why are you resting? Our survival depends on us working. (laughs) And honestly, at the end of the day, these five tools are amazing, but the most important you know, cherry on top of everything, you know, the encompassing tool of all the tools is compassion. There might be guilt whenever you find yourself, you know, feeling anxious that you can't rest or that you burn out again, but don't because it's not your fault. It's not. It's survival. You know, we've been on edge for the longest time. We've been conditioned to be this way. So having the awareness is such a huge step and then bring in the compassion and then use these tools. So I'm going to recap again because I feel like I've been talking a lot and this is probably the first video that I felt comfortable talking this much. I might have rambled a little bit, but I hope this was useful. So (laughs) the five ways to help you move through stress and relax, process your stress through any kind of physical activity. Second, have a grounding tool that helps you just tune in your mind, body, spirit. Third one, redefine rest, slowing down. Redefine what productivity means. Fourth one, set clear boundaries, transitional boundaries, and just boundaries to protect your energy. Five, the benefits of rest and just repeat them. And if you want to put them in a sticky note all over your house, like inspiration, um, alive, I feel more giddy, whatever it is, add them to remind yourself that rest is okay so that you can slowly just fall into it naturally with ease. That's basically it. I ramble for a little bit, but I hope this was helpful for you to redefine your relationship with rest, with slowing down, and understand the reasons why it's so hard. It's not your fault, and I'm here for you. You can DM me or comment in a video if you've enjoyed this. I appreciate you, and thank you for being here.